Hi, my name is Steve Pardue with Elevate Moral Care. I'm one of the managing members of the organization, and I'm here today with Judy Bendit, RDH, to discuss with you silver diamine fluoride, some of its properties, and hopefully answer some of the questions that the first community has. Uh, thank you for joining us here today, uh, Judy. My pleasure. Uh, today I'd like to cover Advantage RS, kind of the history of the material, and before the material was here in the U.S., it's actually been in many countries for about 50 years, since the 1970s. It was discovered in the 60s, its first product was the 1970s, and since that time, it's treated thousands, if not millions, of patients. Mm -hmm. Mostly in Japan, Australia, Southeast Asia, and various other countries in that region of the world. In 2015, we were able to get the product cleared through the FDA here in the USA, and since that time, it's taken off very quickly. But at the same time, it has lots of questions about it. We'd like to answer some of those. So if you wouldn't mind, Judy, could you give us a little bit of background about how you got involved? Absolutely. So I do a lot of mission work. I also do a lot of speaking. And in the world of missions, I was traveling around the world, and people were talking about the silver diamine. And I was like, what is it? And I came back home, and I'd look it up, and couldn't find anything. It just there was nothing published about it here in the United States. And then one day in 2015, I saw that you guys had gotten clearance. And the first phone call I made was to you, and we sat on the phone for about an hour talking about this amazing new product. And I immediately came over because I'm local here in the area, and I said, you know, talk to me about it. Show me how it works. Let's go through the whole process. And I got very excited about it. I've done hundreds of patients with it. I've been teaching it all over the country, and I'm just really having a great time really being able to share this technology with the hygiene world as well as the dental community. Very good. So you've been applying this probably way on hundreds if not thousands of patients. Yeah. Um, who in the office can apply this type of material? Well, obviously the dentist can, and in some states or most states the hygienist can. And the reason we can is because it is called a fluoride varnish, but you need to check with your state um, practice app to make sure that you're allowed to do it. Um, there are a couple states that allow expanded function assistance to do it if they're also allowed to apply fluoride varnish. So it just depends on the state practice act. Very good. And we've also recorded an application video that we will be happy to show everybody as soon as this interview is over. Um, but the application process is very straightforward. Uh, please watch that video so you have a little bit more information on it. Um, but as far as what types of patients do you think would be good for silver diamine fluoride? Uh, Everybody. <laughs> Anybody. <laughs> now there are some people, and the, the challenge is it's interesting. We as clinicians, me as a clinician, we're the ones that are afraid of it. The parent, when you tell that parent that we don't need to give your child an injection, and we don't need to put um, a rubber dam on, and we don't have to use a drill, they're thrilled for us to be able to do this. And in fact, there was a study that showed that it's the perception of us that's harder to overcome than it is the parents. So it's an amazing procedure that anybody can have. If my kids needed, you know, have had a restoration they needed to be done, now you better believe I'd be using silver diamine. But it wasn't around when my kids were little, and hopefully my grandchildren won't need it. But if it's you know, they, they do, I absolutely would be using it on anybody. But geriatric patients, any adult, any child, it's just an amazing product. Are there any types of patients you would not recommend this for, any application uses? Well, if you have a known silver allergy, that's the first thing that's a problem. If the tooth is um, not symptomatic, if you don't have pulpal involvement, you can use it. Now, I have had a couple instances where I've used it pulpally because we didn't have x-rays in the world I work in, and so it really wasn't a problem, but they, the, the, the guidelines say not to use it if the tooth is pulpally involved, and if there are any oral lesions, you shouldn't use it. Makes sense. Uh, as far as most fluorides get used on incipient decay or white spot lesions, now this material can be used on white spot lesions or even capitated advanced decay, is that correct? Absolutely. And the interesting thing is if there is no decay, nothing will happen. So in some countries, they actually use it for caries detection, which is not recommended and indicated in this country, but the reality is, is you know, when you put it on, if there is any decay, it will turn to flat. If there's not, nothing will happen. So we can use it on you know, IC DOS one through three or four patients so that we can be minimally invasive. We don't have to get a drill and start drilling out the decay. Down even a couple of millimeters of dentin. Yeah, I think it's 2.5 millimeters we can get, correct? Very good, yes. Okay. Uh, so for the most recent article said 2.5 yeah, millimeters. Yeah, which is really <laughs> exciting. So that blackness that appears is only on the decay sites. Is that permanent or does that fade? It's permanent. Okay. 
<laughs> but you can cover it, you, you know, depending on the size of the lesion, we can put a glass ionomer on top of it. We can put some kind of a, a restoration to cover that, that glass. Very good. What happens if you get it on your skin or a cheek or tongue or some other soft tissue? It's not a problem. It looks like a little tattoo. And the reality is, is it will come off within a couple of days. You can try to get it off quicker on your skin if you use soap and water or hydrogen peroxide. Some people say it helps them, but it really will come right off. It's not a problem. Very good. And staying on the countertop? So you got it. Oh, no, no, no. Well, the countertop, lately, people are saying they're using the uh, magic erasers. Mm -hmm. the, the problem is if it gets on your uniform. And I actually had a young boy who spit it all over me because he was mad at me. He didn't like the taste of it. <laughs> and he just spit in my entire front of my uniform, which wasn't black at the time. Now I wear black ones. But back then it was a pretty pink and it got all black all over it. So I threw it out. <laughs> <laughs> now as far as cost per application, this material is very inexpensive. If you're using the bottle, uh, the bottle is going to deliver about 250 drops. And each drop is roughly 70 cents. So per application, that's one of the least expensive things you can do. That's less expensive than most fluoride varnish products. Absolutely. Most fluoride applications are dollar, dollar fifty, dollar fifty. This is 70 cents. And the neat thing about this is one drop will give you two five surfaces. So that's huge. Right. I can do a lot. Now they also make a unit dose because there are a lot of institutions and clinics that don't want a bottle that they have to kind of share, so some places will require everybody to have a unit dose, and so that is a little bit more expensive, but it has two drops, and so we'll do 10 surfaces. And there's also an insurance code for the use of silver diamond fluoride. Uh, insurance code D1354, application of the carrier's arresting medicament, does work very well. That's where it should be coded. Um, some insurance providers will cover it, some insurance will not. Uh, check with the individual plans because it does vary from state to state and it also varies from plan to plan. And Medicaid also is now in 30, more than 30 states is now um, accepting this and paying. I was just in Indiana, they, they're paying over $90 for a, a treatment with silver diamine fluoride. Wow, that's the highest I've heard. Yeah, actually it was 98, it went down, but it's, <laughs> it's per quadrant, I think. It's amazing. So there are lots of states doing different things. So you have to check with your state. So one of the questions we get frequently, the product is relatively new in the U.S. and the chemistry is new to the U.S. Is there a lot of research supporting this, this type of product? There is so much research and I think there's over 250 published articles that you can find in PubMed right now. And there are quality studies. This isn't like a product. I've seen some that say, oh, yeah, we have research and there's a cohort of six patients that they use. This is thousands and thousands of patients that have been treated with silver diamine. And there are even some now that are coming out which are really talking about whether the whole SMART, which is the next step from a traumatic restorative treatment where we can actually do the SDS and then we can place a, um, a conventional glass ionomer on top. There are studies now coming out soon with whether we can use this in conjunction with fluoride varnish, whether we want to use both or just one. And so there's a lot, of more, a lot more information coming, so keep your eyes posted on your journals and read all about this as new stuff becomes available. Very good. After you get on your gloves, your mask, and your safety glasses, you want to make sure that your patient is protected with safety glasses as well and a bib and make sure that they've been instructed and given a um, piece of paper to sign to actually show consent that you're doing this, whether it be the parent or the child. You want to take either a drop from the bottle or there are unit doses. So you pick whichever one you're using. A lot of the institutions will use unit doses. In my world, in most offices, they'll use the bottle. You put one drop and you'll see that it's actually blue so that you can see it. It used to be clear in the very beginning, but now it's blue. You, what, the, what I like to do is I, because the, the Dicamin itself has a little odor to it because it is fluoride, it's silver, and it is some ammonia to help um, keep the materials working effectively. So I will take a Q-tip and I'll use the back of it and then place the, that material, that smelly, scented lip balm on the patient's lips so that when I pass through with the actual brushes, which I have two sizes of, it won't be an issue for the patient. They won't even notice what I'm doing. Now, if you have air 
ideally what you would do is you would take your tooth, now obviously the tooth is going to be in the mouth, not extracted, and you're going to dry it off. Now, air is fine, or a Q-tip if you don't have air. Make sure the area is as dry as you can do it. I try, try to use gauze, I use triangles, all those types of things to dry it. I saturate my brush, depending on the size of the lesion, one is bigger than the other. And then once you're in the mouth, you want to aggressively paint it. You don't want to just gently dab. You want to really get a lot of the material in there and really saturate that area along the walls, along the base. And you can see how this is actually starting to turn black. So it's really kind of cool. Now you want to wait 60 seconds before you have the patient spit out. You can dry it again after you're done just to get any excess off. Do not use air after the 60 seconds. If you feel that this lesion is too big and the patient's going to put their tongue on it, if you're worried about the taste, what some offices will do is they'll then put fluoride varnish over it, especially if it's a wiggly little kid who you can't get 60 seconds with, they'll actually place fluoride varnish on and dismiss the patient when they're done. But it's that simple to do. Now, if you have an interproximal lesion, what I like to use is the expandable floss and you can see how taking, after I've taken it out, it gets really puffy, fluffy. I'll go into the interproximal and I'll take one drop, place it right there on the, the floss, and then I can rub that through and actually get the floss on the mesial and the distal of that tooth. And that will work very effectively to get silver diamine into the interproximal surface. So you can actually see how it's starting to get dark. It will darken even more over time. It's going to get probably within a couple hours or the next day it will turn black. What you need to understand is if there is no decay, if there's no demineralization, I can sit here all day long and I can brush this on this occlusal surface and nothing will happen. There, if there is no demineralization, it will not turn black which is why some people do use it for desensitizing. Now the final thing I want to mention is the unit dose. In order to use it, you want to tap it to get anything off the top, and then you would actually snap the, the top of the ampule away from you so that you don't splash yourself. In this container, there are two drops, so you basically have enough for 10 surfaces with this solution. And you can actually see how I can place it right there and use it same as I can using, using it from the bottle. Any last minute tips and tricks for the application before we say goodbye to the, to the burst group? Um, all I really want to say is it's easy, it's fun, it's something that any hygienist can do. It, it's very simple and easy, so just don't, don't be afraid of it. It's something that you all should consider doing. Very good. Well, thank you very much for joining us here today. Thank you very much for having us, and we hope that answered some questions for you.